Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Banjo Quest. Today, we are going to be continuing our introduction to fretless banjo. Specifically, I'm going to be focused on slides. There are certain techniques that you can use to make your slides sound really great on the fretless banjo, and I wanna show you those tricks today. So if you remember, if you think back to last week, I talked about one of my favorite aspects of fretless banjo, and that is that you can make unimpeded slides on the board. That means the frets aren't in the way to divide up your slide sounds, and you get these silky smooth liquidy slides. But there are some techniques that you can use to make the slides even stronger, and there are some pitfalls that beginners frequently find themselves trapped in. I wanna show you how to avoid those. So there are two things on the agenda today. First, we're going to talk about using your nails on your fretting hand, yes, your fretting hand, to ride up on the strings to create a liquidy smooth slide. And the second thing we're going to talk about is how to avoid sounding like a beginner when you're doing your slides. And we'll get to that at the end of the video. All right, let's dive in to fretting technique on a fretless instrument. So normally good fretting requires that we run our nails relatively parallel to the strings. And if you go back to Banjo Blitz where I did the episode called Tale of Two Grips, which I'll link below, I discussed two basic grips on a banjo, the fiddle grip and the classical guitar grip. Well, we need to diverge from both of those grip styles today, and that's because we wanna use the nails on our fretting hand to ride up on the strings to create a really silky smooth sound. So in order to do that, we can't run our nails relatively parallel to the strings like this. We're going to need to rotate our hand out, and then we get our nails perpendicular to the strings like this, and we can run the nails along the strings this way. So let's talk about what's going on here. I'm pivoting a little, but I'm watching the contact with the outside of the neck because the more you grip and contact this section of the fretboard, the more drag you're going to create for your fretting hand, and that's just gonna slow you down and make you a little bit sloppy. So we want to have a little bit of air between this part of the neck and our hands, even though we're rotating like this it's probably a quarter of an inch of air between this section of my hand and the outside of the fretboard. So let me demonstrate how this sounds. I'm going to play the first part of Breaking Up Christmas without the nail, using the pad of my finger to create the slide on the second string. And then I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to ride up on the nail on the slide. So here's me playing on the pad. Now let me ride up on the nail. The other advantage to using the nails on your fretting hand to grab that slide is it allows you to slip along the string much more effortlessly than when you use the pad of your fingers. Because that pad sort of has a tendency to grab the string a little bit and it can create drag on that string and it feels slower. So when you're playing at speed, the nail just allows you to slip along that string effortlessly and so it's a very fast move, which is exactly what you want when you're playing quickly. So one of the mistakes that is easy to make when you're using your nails on the string is that you bear down too hard. With a fretless instrument, it, the tendency to bear down hard is very common because you're trying to squeeze some tone out of the instrument, you're trying to squeeze some volume out of the instrument because it is inherently a little bit more quiet and it has less sustain than a fretted banjo. You've got to avoid that. You need to stay light on that fretboard or your slides are gonna be very draggy and slow and you definitely don't want that. One of the telltale signs that you're applying too much pressure on a string when you're riding up on your nail is that you'll create little grooves in your fingernails when you ride up on them. I did this a ton when I was beginning. So I would be practicing for 30 minutes and I would have these little grooves cut in my nail. And I didn't know it at the time. I thought that was normal. I thought that was a sign that I had been practicing a lot. But in actuality, I discovered later on in my banjo playing career that 
that kind of pressure is completely unnecessary. And the lighter you are on the strings and still getting good tone, the better. And now I can play for a really long period of time and not have those grooves on my nail. So here are two things to keep in mind when you're using your nails of your fretting hand on your fretless banjo. Make sure that you've got a nice light grip. If you're cutting grooves in your nail, you're gripping too hard, reapproach it, slow it down, and lighten up that grip. The second thing is to make sure that you've got air between the outside of the neck and the palm of your hand when you're in this perpendicular position. The only part of the banjo neck that you should be touching really is this part of the neck, the apex of the arch on the back of the neck. If you're gripping on the sides of the neck, you're going to create a lot of drag. It's going to slow you down and make your fretting sloppy and harder than it needs to be. So we've talked about nails on your fretting hand riding the strings on a fretless banjo. Now let's talk about the common mistake most beginners make when they're using slides on a fretless banjo. And that is they are sliding too far. So I want you to think when you pick up that banjo, I want you to think that you're gesturing. You're not going the full distance with your slides. Think of the slides as gestures pointing towards your notes but not actually getting all the way there. So for example, if we take a phrase where we want to get from fret one to fret three on the second string, instead of sliding that whole distance, we're gonna to gesture towards that note instead. So why do we want to have small contained slides? Well, I see two reasons for this. The first is aesthetic. I don't like the sound of huge extravagant slides. I want them to be contained and I want them to blend in to the phrase that I'm playing. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is we want to avoid breaking position on a fretless instrument. We don't want to break that position unless we have to. And as soon as you start emptying the tank into a slide, you're going to find yourself inadvertently lost on the board. Remember, position is everything on a fretless instrument. So if you are breaking that position, you're always at risk of losing intonation. And in the beginning, that's really, it's perilous because once you lose intonation, it can be very hard to get it back. Now, later on, as you get better and better at playing fretless, you're going to be able to make constant micro adjustments on the fly so position becomes less and less important as you progress on the instrument but in the beginning position is everything and if you empty that tank into a big slide suddenly you've lost your reference points and getting back to that sweet spot of intonation can be very difficult Thank you so much for joining me on Banjo Quest today. That is it for today. Over on Patreon next week on Wednesday, I will be releasing a patron-only video discussing other fretting hand techniques that you can use to get a lot of punch and clarity out of your fretless banjo. So hop on over to Patreon if you're interested in that. And otherwise, I will see you next week right here on Banjo Quest.